What if Native Americans never existed? You might think that the Americas looked like this, pure unaltered forest before any colonists came from Europe. Yet this was far from the truth. The lands that today we call the Americas may have been home to up to 100 million Native Americans, although this is somewhat difficult to validate. Yet those Native Americans built vast kingdoms such as those of the Aztecs, Inca, and Maya, and developed extensive methods of agriculture that still shape our lives today. So today we're asking what if Native Americans never existed at all? What if Columbus stepped onto a totally quiet land, pristine and void of people, if he ever came over at all? How would history change? Would colonization still take place as it did in our timeline? How would the cultures of people change around the world? Let's take a look and find out. Contrary to popular belief, the Native Americans crucially changed the environment around them. Even those who were hunter-gatherers, they managed to develop entirely new crops such as corn that we take for granted today and also cultivated squash, beans, pumpkins, cotton, and potatoes. Say goodbye to avocado and cassava and tomatoes and papaya. Chocolate and tobacco and quinine would all be non-existent. To tell the truth, when people say that the Native Americans were insignificant and didn't contribute to society, because most of them do not follow our vision of a civilized society, I just think of how wrong they really are. Apart from the great societies in Mesoamerica and South America that would lose due to empty Americas, we would also lose most of the foods that we eat today. Entire cultures and populations and traditions would be changed forever by the absence of humans in the Americas before the arrival of the Europeans. The crops that the Europeans took back to Eurasia and Africa contributed to a quarter of the population growth that took place in the 200 years before 1900. Think about this simple fact. The population of China stood at around 100 to 150 million people until the mid-1700s. Between 1749 and 1851, the population more than doubled to 430 million people. There's no way this was due to industrialization. As we shall see, the Chinese fiercely resisted modernization unlike their Japanese neighbors. This can be explained by the introduction of maize, white potatoes, and sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes alone were able to yield 10 times the gross weight produced by rice, while maize increased food yield by 30%. Although I could go on and on about sweet potatoes for the next 10 minutes, it suffices to say that without the Native Americans, the overall population of the world would be much lower. But what about the Americas themselves, which would be empty and teeming with strange beasts and wildlife for the time of the Europeans? While some people blame the death of the megafauna on the natives, others point to climatic events such as the Younger Dryas. So the Europeans most likely would not see woolly mammoths or be eaten by saber tooths. The first Europeans to step foot in the Americas, the Vikings under Leif Erikson, would remain as they wouldn't have to fight with the Native Americans as they did in our timeline. The colony of Vinland flourishes, and more Norsemen eventually arrive. I made a video about what if the Vikings had remained in America, but in that timeline the natives were still around. As trade and contact flourishes between the rowing colonies with rich and seemingly unlimited land and resources, the center of the Viking world shifts from Scandinavia to Vinland. Remember, in this time, European naval technology was pretty primitive. And it wasn't like they were regularly crossing the oceans. We don't even know how the Vikings really managed it. So don't expect a regular influx of people from Europe. Just people from nearby Viking colonies such as Greenland and Iceland. The colony grows at a snail space even with new arrivals. By the 1400s, Europe is awakening from the slumber and the age of exploration is about to begin. It was during this time that the Portuguese make an attempt for the North American coast. Now, in our timeline, the Caravel, a faster type of ship that could sail against the wind, was developed by the Portuguese, bolstered by hundreds of years of knowledge filtering back to Europe about the presence of a vast, new, unspoiled continent, and with the Caravel to help achieve it, the Portuguese arrive in the Americas in this alternate timeline. I can't say where they will land, but if Columbus's voyage is any indicator, probably in the Caribbean. Immediately they find that the land is quiet, too quiet. Without gold and riches to interest in men, they return to Europe. No large-scale colonization takes place, and the entire ordeal is dismissed as a useless folly. Most of the Americas remains unspoiled wilderness for now. The Spanish also attempt a landing, although they too find nothing. 
Columbus disappears into history, and today no one remembers his name. He is another among faceless travelers discovering for themselves the emptiness of the land. I read somewhere that the Spanish were able to conquer the Americas, but not fully grasp it. What this means is that the Spanish Empire looks pretty impressive on paper, but it was really empty. There was no one there, really. In this time, the Spanish don't even attempt to create a grand empire, and only a few stray Spaniards may even decide to live and start a settlement. The English and the French attempt their own incursions, but most are failures and the explorers and initial settlers either die due to no help from indigenous people who are non-existent in this timeline, or go back to their homeless, disappointed with the hard life and no gain. Spain remains a backwater nation and may even dissolve back into Castile and Aragon. The French mode of colonialism, which relied on sparse populations of French settlers relying on close relationships with the native to, to thrive, would simply not work. The British colonists outnumbered the French 20 to 1 at the beginning of the French and Indian War. So for all intents and purposes, large-scale French and Spanish colonialism is out of the picture. This leaves only one major power, and that is the English. Motivated more so by religious freedom and placing emphasis on growing the colonial population, the English relied the least on Native Americans. Sure, most likely Jamestown would die off and the pilgrims resigned to the history books without native aid, but eventually the English would create colonies, albeit uh, nothing on the scale of what it would become in our timeline. Without New World crops, the food supply would be much less varied and more precarious. Tobacco, the lifeblood of some of the first English colonies, would be non-existent. The English colonists would have no idea how to live in this strange new world, and the population would be more densely concentrated near the coast, away from the thick, unsettled forest. There is actual evidence that it was a fire set by the natives that contributed to extra sediments and rivers in the eastern seaboard and the patchwork of grassland and forest we see in America today. So we would expect to see a less fertile eastern seaboard, while the English struggled to find their way into the Americas along with any other potential European competitors, let's look at the situation in the rest of the world. The slave trade would only occur on a smaller scale. Without large European empires requiring slaves to satisfy their labor needs, Africans stay in Africa and the continent as a whole ends up in a better state than it is today. Europeans without quinine are never able to penetrate the dark continent anyway and so in that regard end up sticking to the coast. Demographics has played a big role throughout history, without the huge explosions in population experienced by many Asian powers such as India and China, the Europeans would have even more of an advantage in the region. While India would be subdued as it was in our timeline and incorporated into the British Empire, other European powers would advance on a weaker China. Qin China's burgeoning population devoted to the emperor and with great racial homogeneity was the reason China was not colonized in the original timeline. Sure, you might say that the competition between European powers and America's foot in the door open door policy contributed to the absence of Chinese colonization, and you'll be right. But China's sheer size and former power prevented easy colonization. In the Opium Wars, about 19,000 British troops were able to defeat over 200,000 Qin soldiers fighting with inferior technology. The Chinese would definitely lose these series of wars and probably collapse into anarchy as the Europeans moved in. So, the Europeans would be massively overpowered in Asia at least. By the year 1800, the world population would be much less than a billion as it was in our timeline. And Europeans would dominate most of the world except the deepest interior parts of Africa. The Industrial Revolution could still revolutionize life and boost the population, yet humanity would be missing several of the crops that fueled its explosion. In the Americas, a vast swaths of land are still empty, even if Europeans claim most of it just for the sake of it. Spain is a backwater, France is not much better, and overall Britain will be the winner. After hundreds of years of presence in the Americas, they have managed to develop an economy based not on natural resources as the French and Spanish did in our timeline, but on human capital. The colonists are given a chance to expand freely into the Ohio River Valley with an essentially invisible French presence there and no Native Americans, the French and Indian War never happens. The War of the Spanish Succession, which was fought in the early 1700s to prevent the union of the European Titans, France and Spain never happens, since they're not European Titans anymore. The British grow to dominate in the Americas, in India and in China and in Australia. Without an American Revolution to speak of and little French expenditures wasted 
on helping the Americans. France remains a monarchy and the French Revolution never happens. Napoleon never rises to challenge the British. Increasingly, the British Empire grows into an uncontested world superpower. America does not exist as we know it. And in the year 1900, the world looks something like this. Vastly underpopulated with the British hegemony. The British colonists were fundamentally different from any other competitor. They transplanted British culture overseas with the British institutions and law and people and relied little on outside resources. This would be the only somewhat successful way forward in an empty America. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. This is Scott of the World, signing out.